Why does the mind keep feeding itself with information? Even those who meditate and meditate and practice and practice and become so non-dual, the, 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 the emptiness is that liberating freedom and it's like there's not only a no you, there's a no or a no, nor a no me or a no I. There's a no nothing. There's no. A, there's a nothing known. It's so empty that the mind has has left the premises. It's went on vacation, and then very slowly. It starts providing you, providing itself with information. It's life, you see. When a body goes in, is in an accident, and it is put on a some sort of life support machine, and when it wakes up eventually, it has no recollection. Even the body finds it difficult to move. It needs um, physiotherapy, rehabilitation, all this stuff. But it wants to recover. It wants to recover to that what it was before. And all we, all the mind is doing in this situation of non-duality, I'm on vacation, yeah, but I want to come home. I want to recover. I want to get back in. I want to be as I was before. And this is a very, very natural thing. Because we are all trying to recover that what we truly originally are. Something pulls us out, whatever we are, that mind. Before mind is involved, something pulls us out to this existence. And we appear as consciousness or a body or whatever it is that we appear as. It's like this magnet says, no, no, you're coming out, like that Big Bang. A little pinhole in the universe, a little pinhole in darkness projects this light in this galaxies and this cosmos out. The universe is like pulling us out of darkness. So we're originally darkness. That's, again, another idea, but based on that Big Bang Theory. So what are we originally that keeps pulling us out? And the recovery is to stop us being pulled out further. So the pure mind has to recover. There has to be a sense of, I exist. I exist. I am. Cannot be full blown emptiness. Even Christ could not maintain, even Buddha could not maintain full blown presence and emptiness. Pure, tranquil, absolute love. Could not project that out. But when we recover, when the mind recovers from its accident on its life support machine and its physical rehabilitation, it wants to be as it was before, but the shadow ego mind is clinging on like that leech. Okay, I was just hiding the background. Yeah, pure mind's coming forward. And whatever it is we are, we're welcoming it. I don't want to be in a life support machine. I don't want to be dead to the world. I really don't want to be non-dual permanent because I have no association, no relations, nothing going on in this world. Non-duality is just an experience to show you that stage before, that original darkness, that original freedom, that original liberation. There's no one comes back and tells you exactly what it was. Even Rumi tried to describe it through poetry, through, through incredible, vast parables and, and words and sensational, emotional connections so that we could connect to that what we are before. All valid stuff. But the ego, it also wants to be as it was before. So pure I comes back. So we've done away with I. There is no I, there's no me, there's no you. 
There's no person, there's no name, there's no identity, there's just non-dual, incredible bliss, incredible contented life as it is. And something the world, whether it's your family or your inner consciousness being, your human side says, no, no, you have to come back. And that's okay. Everything starts recovering. And suddenly, just when everything seems to be, oh, okay, now I'm non-dual, but I am also dual. I am also, I am everything. And I'm nothing. And then suddenly one day, <laughs> hello, it's me. It's me. Okay, you should watch the television screen, see what's going on in the world. There are so many wars, so many politicians changing places, so many viruses, so many pandemics. Come on. You're non-dual now. You're a special. You're a saint. You can, you can fix this world. Come on, let's do it. Let's do it together. Me and you. That's when the great Osho says it is extremely important at this point to observe you're not observing the world you're not observing the pandemic the politicians and the wars you're observing the mind the thoughts telling you to get out of this present state completely and return to completely as you were before not closer to your original state no no closer to me the ego that wants to take you on many, many dimensions, many, many more journeys, many, 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 many beautiful, wonderful sights to see. And you say, well, and many, many more sufferings. And ego says, no, no, that's finished with. You're non-dual. That's finished with. We can take pure mind along with us, can we? Pure mind cannot see ego. This is behind. Pure mind cannot see what is behind it, what is not true to it. Pure mind only sees that what it is. And you return to this human being, balanced Buddha state, with a cunning ego mind turning up on a television screen, in the workplace, on YouTube in social media, in your house. Ah, well, look at this, I remember this. Ah, oh, this is when I, I was, I was doing that stuff, that, that project. This is when I wanted to write my book. Maybe I should write my book now. An ego. He's in, he's back. You don't close the door on ego, you allow ego in and a very simple identification process. Okay, ego, I will call myself Graham, Popsy, whatever you want to call me, and I will react to that. I will associate with you. But we are not the best of pals. We are not the best friends in the world. We are not lovers. You're just a mirror reflection of that what I remind you as. I remember you as, but before you came out of the mirror, you entered this body and you took over this body. But this time you moved anywhere nearer than the mirror and you're a goner again. Who can do it? Who can maintain non-duality and who can Keep ego at bay. What a waste of life. If you, ego saying, what a waste of life. There's so many things to see, so many things to do. Let's go to Mars. Let's go on the television screen and see how you can, and how you can resolve your, the whole world's financial collapse. You can do it, Christ did it. 
And then you remind me, you go, yes, but Christ ended up on that cross. Because you appeared in so many disguises to crucify this, this being, this body, this pure entity. So the mind of information will never ever be defeated. The only way it can be defeated is to by ignoring it. Allowing it some presence. Invite it in for a cup of tea. Mind, you only got 15 minutes, you're out. It will be okay with that. Ego is okay with 15 minutes of your time. A little name, a little association, a little hug every now and then. But you'll never, ever, ever stop looking at what was revealed when ego died for that moment. Ego cannot maintain the power it had before. Even you don't need that observation skills every moment of every day like Osho says. Because there's not a you observing ego, there's just life observing life with a little play taking place as ego mimics what it thinks you want or you need. You don't need anything in this world. You don't need anything more than what you are. Breath, simple, basic, pure, incredible, wise, loving life. 